the founding charism of the apostolic Carmel. Life is no brief candle to me. It is sort of a splendid torch which I have got hold of for a moment and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it to future generations, said Bernard Shaw. We are here to gain insight into the shared charism from the Holy Spirit originating in our foundress venerable Mother Veronica which has brought us together as a family of the Apostolic Carmel. Each of us Apostolic Carmelites has received the splendid torch of our AC charism and we have to make it burn as brightly as possible by living it intensely so that it becomes a visible sign of God's all-sufficing love until we hand it over to the future generation at the end of our life. At the origins of our charism, we find an experience of the spirit lived by our foundress, Venerable Mother Veronica, chosen by God to accomplish his works. Mother Veronica had several mystical experiences and locutions by which she received messages from God. All these fine-tuned her to small still voice within her directing her life. She discerned these with the help of her spiritual directors to ascertain God's will and purpose in her life. The experience referring to the founding charism was when she was at St. Joseph's Calicut as a sister of St. Joseph of the Apparition. She relates in her autobiography, I often heard an interior voice which said to me, I want you in Carmel. At first, she says that she did not understand what it all meant and did not feel inclined to leave the congregation she loved. Little by little, the Spirit, as with Mary at the Annunciation, gave her the interior knowledge that it was God's will for her and she, like the Blessed Virgin, surrendered to it without knowing how, when and where it had to be accomplished. Her deep contemplative experience made her sense the need in the church and understand that she was called. To bring the life of faith and light of Christ to those who were still in darkness, for Catholic education, especially for girls, to deepen their faith experience and to focus on their faith formation, to bring the compassionate love of Christ to the poor and those in need. She began to realize that she was called by God to a new beginning in the church. God wanted her to embark on this new venture of living the Carmelite spirit of contemplation by combining it with an active apostolate with direct contact with the people. She learned trust in providence and perseverance under trials and difficulties through her untiring search of five months for a place to start the foundation. Her single-minded search for God's will and humility were strengthened through her life of total surrender when faced with rejection and disappointment on several occasions. Her deep unwavering faith made her recognize God's hand in every single event that gave her 
the assurance that the foundation was God's work. Through her life and words, she tried to instill in them important principles. She helped them to assimilate the following values and attitudes. A strong desire to seek God alone. A deep and humble awareness of God's initiative in the love relationship which is gratuitous, unconditional and faithful. A spirit of contemplation so that everything flows from our union with God. A love for the real presence in the Eucharist. Devotion to Mary. Obedience to God's will is the essence of our life as apostolic Carmelites. Self-effacing humility and charity. Love of the cross. Fraternal love in community. And committed leadership. Mother Veronica had a thirst for contemplation which expressed itself in ardent missionary zeal. It was nurtured in early childhood in her home and grew steadily until it became a passion for the missions and she exclaimed, As for me, I was not afraid of anything at that time. I was ardent and full of zeal to begin my work among the people whom St. Francis Xavier had evangelized. She was called, she says in her autobiography, to fill an emptiness that existed in our holy order and which was shown to me during my retreat in the form of a globe which was not complete. It lacked a big slice and I was told that this was the third order regular which did not exist in Carmel. So the apostolic Carmel was the first ever third order regular in Carmel for the missions. She spelled out in the vocabulary of her times the mission of the third order she founded in her constitutions, the end of the third order in twofold. First, self-sanctification by means of meditation and mortification of the senses. Second, work for the salvation of souls by prayer and by educating the girls. Since the charism of our foundress is the charism that is lived in the here and now. It is we and not others who at this moment share and live the charism. It is our relationships with each other, a way of following and serving Christ as emanating from these relationships which here and now incarnate the dynamic movement of the charism. As long as the charism is truly alive in us, living members of the congregation, it is a continuity of life originating from the foundress. This is like the continuity of life from the seed through the branch and the flowers to the fruit. Charism is a living reality, not an object or a statement. We, the members of the Apostolic Carmel, are trustees of our charism and its responsible bearers. We have to deepen and develop it and pass it on to the younger generation and to those who will enter our religious family after us. They have to receive it in all its undiminished authenticity as entrusted to us from our foundation.